This is Nick with Illustrator for Beginners.com, and in today's tutorial, I'll be demonstrating how you can create this vectorized glitch effect using Adobe Illustrator. So I'm going to go ahead and get started here in Illustrator. I'm going to open up a custom size document size to 1280 by 1280. Go ahead and click Create. And the first thing I want to do is set up our documents so that we're all working with a similar view. I'm going to come up here to where it says View, and I want everything here unchecked except for Snap to Points. So where it says Snap to Pixel, let me turn that off. If you have anything else checked here, just go ahead and turn it off. We only want snap to point selected. And over here where it says window, we're going to want a line, color, and stroke selected. And then we can uh, click out of that. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to create some text. I'm going to grab the text tool, which is over here, and click on the canvas. It's going to put some placeholder text there. And up here from this drop down, I'm going to click on this to choose a font. And the font I'm going to use is called 8-Bit Wonder. So I'll go ahead and select that. If you don't have that font installed, I'll put a link in the description to where you can download it. It's a free font, so go ahead and download that font. And what I'm going to do now is I want to put some spacing between these letters, and you'll see why later on in the tutorial. Uh, in order to put some spacing, I'm just going to hold Alt on the keyboard and press right on the arrow keys a few times. You can even hold down the arrow key. You want to put a lot of spacing between them like that. And then I'm going to change the text. I'm just going to write for the sake of this tutorial. I'm going to write glitch. You could write whatever you'd like there, but for this tutorial, I'm writing glitch. So once we have that, I'll grab the uh, selection tool and I'll hold shift and alt on the keyboard and click and drag this uh, bottom right node right here to scale that up. Let me put this towards the center of the page. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to go to uh, type and create outlines. And that's going to change that from a text object to an actual um, a path or a curve, as you would put it. And what I'll do now is I'm going to grab the uh, rectangle tool, which is over here, and I'm just going to click and drag and create a little rectangle going over, going through the text here, like that. And I'm going to make that red, so um, let me just grab the color red over here, and I'm going to make the opacity of this down. I'm going to make that down about in half. Up here where it says opacity, we could just click and drag that down to roughly 50%, doesn't have to be exact. I'm going to press escape on the keyboard to get out of that. And what I want to do is I just want to zoom in on this area right here. So I'm going to hold alt on the keyboard and roll up the mouse wheel a few times. And I'm going to grab the uh, select tool. I'm going to hold control on the keyboard and grab this node right here and then just snap it to this node right there. And let me just move that back over. I'm going to hold shift so it locks onto the vertical axis. And let me zoom out a little bit so I can see what I'm working with here and see where that rectangle is aligned. To move the page around, I'm just pressing down the space bar and then clicking and dragging. We want this rectangle going over the entire text object like that. And I'm actually going to make this a little shorter. I'm just going to grab that node and bring that down a little bit, maybe like that. And what I'll do is I'll create a duplicate of this rectangle. So I'll just click and drag it and then hold down Alt and that'll create another copy. And then just let go of the click and then let go, let go of Alt. And I'm just going to make this one a little shorter than the previous one like that. And I'm going to hold control, grab this node right here, the top left, and snap it onto this node of the, uh, the letter G right there. Then I'll just move this back over. I'm just going to hold shift and move it back over to the left like that. And I'm going to create one more copy of this. So I'm going to hold alt and then just click and drag it to create another copy. And then I'll hold shift, I'm, at, I'm sorry, I'll hold control and I'll grab this node and snap it onto this corner of the, of the letter G right there. And I'm going to make this one a little taller. So I'm going to take this bottom node and just make that a little, increase the height a little bit like that. And again, I'll just move this over here like that. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to use these rectangles as a reference point as to where to break up these letters. So to do that, I'm just going to click and drag over everything so we have it all selected. And I'm going to go to the Shape Builder tool, which is over here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold Alt on the keyboard and click and drag a line going through those shapes right there, and it's going to delete them. And I'm going to do the same thing over here. I'm going to hold Alt, click and drag a line through them to delete them. I want to delete these little pieces right here. So I'm going to hold Alt, click and drag through them. Let me zoom back out. Again, to zoom, I'm just holding Alt and rolling up and down the mouse wheel. To move the page around, I'm just pressing down the space bar and clicking and dragging. And I'm just holding Alt and clicking and dragging through these pieces to get rid of them. And there we have what's left uh, of, our, of our text. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to hold Shift 
and click and drag to create a selection just over these top pieces right here. You notice the black pieces up top there? Just over those and it's going to create, uh, it's, it's kind of going to make them the, uh, the foreground color which is red like that. And I want to come down here and do the same thing to the next row of shapes. I'm going to hold shift, click and drag a, a little selection going through them, making sure you're only selecting those shapes. Don't accidentally select any shapes above or below. You want, you want to select just those shapes and then let go. And I'm going to go through and do the same thing to these other shapes over here. Again, just making sure you're holding shift when you do this. Otherwise, it's going to draw a freehand line and it's going to accidentally touch some other objects, most likely. All right, so now that we've done that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this select tool. Let me click off of this to deselect everything. And I just want to make sure we ended up with what we were trying to go for here, which was to break all of these up into individual little pieces. And as you can see, that's exactly what happened. So I'm just going to hit Control Z and put them all back. What I want to do now is I want to select all of these top pieces up here and I want to make them black up here in the color panel. I'll just click black and I'll go to object, compound path, make. And that's going to make them into a compound path or like a, a, a single object so that they're not all divided. We want a, a single group of all of these objects on one horizontal plane. And I'm going to go through and do the same thing with, these, with the next row of shapes below it. Click on that, go to object, Compound path, make, turn that black, do the, do the same thing down here. If you want a little shortcut instead of going to object, compound path, you can use the keyboard shortcut, which is, as you can see here, control eight. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to hit control eight, and that's going to make a compound path out of that. Let me do the same thing down here. Grab those objects, hit control eight, turn them black. You might want to click off of it to deselect them before you go to grab the next one. It might make life a little easier. Control 8, make them black. Same thing over here. Control 8, make them black. And then over here, Control 8, and make them black. And so what I want to do now is I want to click and drag over all of these. And I want to bring the opacity all the way up. And we can click out of that. And I'm going to zoom in over just this letter G right here. So I'm going to hold Alt and roll up the mouse wheel to zoom in on the letter G. And I'm going to take this row right here and I'm going to slide this to the, to the left a little bit. I'm going to hold Shift so it locks it onto the horizontal axis. And I'll bring that out to the left a little bit like that. Then I'll take this, I'll leave this next row right where it is and then I'll take the row above that. And I'll move that. I'll hold Shift and just move that to the right a little bit like that. I'll skip the next row, leave that where it is, and go to the next one up here, and move this to the left by holding Shift and just clicking it over to the left, clicking and dragging it over to the left like that. And then this top one that can stay right where it is. So let me zoom back out to see what we're working with here. As you can see, we've created our text. It has like a kind of like a glitched, um, disoriented sort of a, a appeal to it now. What I want to do now is unify all of this together. So I'm going to click and drag over everything. And I'm going to do another control eight, which makes a compounds path, which is over here. Compounds path, make. So control eight, and that's now one object. What I want to do now is create a duplicate of this object. So I'm going to hold alt and click and drag, and then hold shift as well so it stays on the same uh, horizontal plane. And I want to make this uh, like a pinkish red, something like that. That looks pretty good. And what I'll do now is I'll right click on that and go to arrange send backward and it's going to lower that beneath the black text and I'm just going to use the left arrow key the left and right arrow keys to move that over a little bit I'm going to move this right about there that looks pretty good let me click off of that to deselect everything I want to now create another copy of the black text so click on that and then hold shift and alt and just slide it over to the left a little bit making sure you lock it onto the same horizontal plane as I'm doing here and I'll make this one blue maybe something like that right there is pretty good. And then I'll right click that, go to arrange, send backward. And then again, you can use your left and right arrow keys to adjust it accordingly. I think right there looks pretty good. I may even go with a different shade of blue, maybe something like that. Okay, that's more what I'm going for. 
So what I want to do now is I want to move these letters all close to each other. And if you see what I did here at the beginning, the reason why I put a lot of space between these letters originally is because we had to create duplicate copies of the letters and slide them left and right next to each other. So we wanted to make sure we had enough room between letters to do that. But now that we've done that, we can get rid of some of that room. So I'll, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go to the uh, direct selection tool and I'm just going to click and drag over this one letter right here and it's going to select all of the nodes in that little selected area. I'm going to hold shift and just, no, I'm sorry, I'm going to, let me select that again. I'm going to click and drag this over to the right and then hold shift. Bring that over there like that, a little closer to the letter L. And I'll do the same thing over here. I'll, I'll click and drag over both the G and the L now. Click and drag this over to the right. Hold shift after you click and drag it like that. Do the same thing, including the G, the L, and the I. Move that over. And I'm pretty sure you get the idea. You can now go through and do the same thing and bring these letters as close together as you'd like. like that. Let me zoom out a little bit. One last final step. This isn't really necessary, but I like to do it myself because I feel like it just enhances the uh, the um, the glitch appearance as I like to shear it a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click and drag over all of it. And up here where it says scale, if you click and drag, if you click and hold on that icon, you're going to get this little fly out menu. I'm going to choose the shear tool. And then let me zoom in. I'm just going to click and drag this over to the right a little bit, holding the shift key so that it locks it onto the horizontal axis like that. Right about there is what I'm looking for. Just to give it a little bit of a slant, a little bit of a shear like that. And as you can see, we're finished. We've created our glitch text effect using Adobe Illustrator. So uh, if you haven't done so already, please consider joining the Illustrator for Beginners mailing list in order to receive email alerts whenever new tutorials are posted. Your information won't be sold to or shared with anyone else, and you'll never receive any kind of spam or promotional emails from me whatsoever. The only time you'll receive an email from me is when a new tutorial is posted, and you'll get to watch it on the Illustrator for Beginners website without any third-party advertisement interrupting your learning experience. So go ahead and check that out. I'll put a link in the description if you're interested. If you have any questions, let me know, and as always, thanks for watching.